So I get permission to do this and I already stopped by one security guard. <laughs> We are filming a B-roll sequence today for the Life of JT Plaza Slot Pool. Join us. Should be fun. Spin it. Now. That's JT's video. And believe it or not, this is the second time I'm recording this clip. The second time. Because the first time I was so busy look in the microphone to see if I turn it on, I forgot to hit record on the camera. <clears throat> How you like that, Silver Fox? You know what you just told me once? You went out and forgot to hit record. Anyway, um, JT from the life of JT asked me to go to the Plaza Hotel and film a video for him and edit it for a slot pool that he's gonna be doing. And so Alex and I went down there and we put this video together. Now what I'm gonna show you and this video I'm filming right now is how I pulled off some of the effects that I did in his video and I loosely call them effects because I'm a beginner editor. This is by no means a master class on editing, but I said from the beginning of my channel, for those of you who have gone back and watched those first couple horrible videos, and those of you that have been following along the whole time, that I started my channel for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to learn how to edit Two, I wanted to have fun with my kids. And three, I wanted to incorporate editing and filmmaking into the things that I do in my everyday life, which would be travel, food, hanging out with my kids, just being a goofball, just things like that. And that's the reason why I started this channel. And it gave me something to do. It got me off the couch. It got me to stop feeling sorry for my fat ass and go do something with my life. And in the process of running this channel or building this channel or making videos for this channel, I've met a lot of really cool people. Ted and Jake and Brandon and um, just there's just so many of them that I'm afraid that if I don't name everybody they're gonna get mad at me but when you're looking at a camera you have a tendency to forget these things anyway rambling what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you a couple effects that I did in the video that you'll see at the end of this video that I did for JT now once again I'm not a master editor I'm learning how to do this and I said this in my channel before, I'm going to share with you my learning experiences and learning curve and whatever else there is as I'm making this journey, I'm becoming an editor. So I'm going to assume for those of my friends that use DaVinci Resolve or anybody else that used DaVinci Resolve 16, 16.12 or 16.2, whichever one it's on right now, I use the free version. So what I'm doing in my videos is done on the free version. I'm going to buy the studio version i just can't afford it yet but anyway i'm going to show you how i achieve the so-called effects in this video and i'm going to do a step-by-step -step. so if you want to use these things for any of your videos you can so all that being said let's jump into it i honestly don't know how many times i'm going to film this before i get it right this is probably the 10th time but since this is my first tutorial where I film my screen and try to get audio at the same time, give me a break, would you? Anyway, as I said before, we're in DaVinci Resolve now. This is a program I use to edit. My computer isn't exactly the best for this program. You should be running at least 16 gigs of RAM. I'm, my computer's only eight. I do have a decent uh, GPU, which is the graphics card, but the RAM isn't quite enough. So anyway, all that being said, sometimes it does slow down, sometimes it glitches. And uh, what I am gonna tell you is, whenever you build a project and you get everything dragged into your media pool, which I'm assuming you know how to do, you should always go up to here and click save, which I've already done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the first effect I did in JT's video, which um, has been premiered already. And you'll see the finished project or product at the end of this video. So this is the clip. Double click it and it'll show up over here in the preview window. And if you click play, if I click play, you're going to hear the audio. So I'll be quiet because it'll drown me out. And you can see that it's in slow motion. And how I got it in slow motion was I filmed in 60 frames a second. And then when I brought it into DaVinci, I already did this, which I should have showed you how, but I'm going to show you how now. When you have the 
clip highlighted over here before it's in the timeline. Because you do it in the timeline, you're going to cause yourself all kinds of problems. So while it's highlighted up here, it can be over here. But while it's highlighted, right click and go to clip attributes. And then you're going to see right here, I've already changed it to 23.976, which is 24 frames a second. What it was, was 59.94, which is 60 frames a second. So pretend I right click this little pop-up box open and said 59.94. I want to drop it to, to 24 so I can do some slow motion, which is right here. You click OK. Now, you can only do this with, with footage that's shot at 30, 60, or 120. You can't slow-mo 24 frames a second that you filmed. You can if you use a bunch of stupid apps that you can get online, but it's going to copy frames in between and it's going to look all glitchy and weird. Okay, so now I've slowed it down. I don't need the audio. So when you when you run your mouse, hover your mouse over the preview window, you'll see it has this icon, which is video, and this icon, which is audio. I don't need the audio. So we're just going to grab the video, and we're going to drag it down here, and I'm going to show you how I did the first effect that I did in JT's video. Now, I'm going to, this is the playhead right here. I'm going to go ahead and click the space bar, which will play, and pick a spot where I want to make the edit, which will be right here. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to click Control B. Now, Silver Fox knows all of the shortcuts, and I don't. It's probably why it takes me so long to edit, and I should learn them, but I know I, I know enough to get myself in trouble. So we're going to scroll down a little by clicking the space bar, and we'll go right about there. Now, let's go back. I don't want this to be a real long edit. We'll go right about there. I'll highlight it. I'll click Control B. Now, here's what I want to do. I need to copy this. I'm going to slide this down. I'm going to grab this and pull this down a little bit. I need to copy this, so I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go up to Copy, and now I've copied the clip. There is a shortcut for doing this. Uh, it's Control-C, but it's not going to work for what I want to do right now. I'm going to slide this clip up. Now, I've done this 16 different times, and it never works. And on the tutorial, I'm sure it's going to make me look like a fool. So I've slid the playhead over here, and I've slid this video, which is right here, up. And I want to add the copy I just made right here. So click, it highlights, right click next to the playhead and hit paste. And there is your copy. Now your copy is the same. Both of these clips are the same, so it's going to play the same. You're not going to see any difference. What happens is, is the playhead will always play the clip that's on top. So if you have a bunch of video clips stacked on top of each other, Unless you turn this clip off, which you can do if you follow my cursor over here, now it's turned off, which would make a difference because it's going to stay the same. I don't want it off. I want it on. But to show you what I mean is if I drag this clip back here, what's going to happen is the cursor is going to play along here, and once it hits here, it's going to start playing, and it's going to drop down and play this again. You'll see it jump, and it'll jump back down. Boom. See? Because it played the clip on top, and when the clip ran out, then it fell back to here. All right, so now we're going to, this is how we're going to do the edit. And this is what I did on JT's video. This is the one thing I want to show you guys where I made this weird, where the video kind of shrunk and did all kinds of weird stuff. So what we're going to do is the transform. Now, a lot of the things I've learned, I learned in uh, watching tutorials and then I added to it and played around with it and learned on my own. This particular edit, I learned completely on my own. Because I saw it in another YouTuber's video and I wanted to know how he did it. Well, I saw something similar and I wanted to learn how he did that, but there's no tutorial for it. So I basically had to learn on my own. So what we're going to use now is the transform and keyframing. So I got my video highlighted. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click this little arrow right here. If you see my cursor moving, it's right here. And I'm going to click transform. Now you get this little box right here. So we're going to tell DaVinci what we want this top clip to do over the bottom clip. I'm going to shrink this by grabbing this little and pushing it into there. And then I'm going to click this. If you follow my cursor over here, this is called the inspector. And you see the word transform. I'm going to click a keyframe. The keyframe tells DaVinci that at this point of the playhead, this is what this video should be doing because it's the one highlighted and it's what we're working on. So then I'm going to move the playhead down a few frames. And I'm going to click the keyframe again, and I'm going to stretch the video. So what I just told DaVinci was, from this point to this point, the video should be small and stretch. So then I'm going to move the playhead again down to about here. 
I'm going to click the keyframe again, and I'm going to stretch this right about there. I'm going to move the playhead down a little bit more. I'm going to click the keyframe up here again, and then I'm going to stretch this even more this way and this way. And then I'm gonna let the playhead run out by clicking the space bar. Now, everything we did with the keyframes, it's gonna show here and it's gonna show the whole motion. It's not gonna do it glitchy. It's gonna show the video small and you're gonna see it grow from keyframe to keyframe until the playhead gets down here to the bottom clip where it'll just pop open. Now that we've done all this, we don't have to have the transform on it anymore because we've told DaVinci what we want. Rule of thumb, you just made all these edits. When you're done, Go up here to File, come down here to Save Project, not Save As, Save Project. You've already made the project name, and click Save. Because what will happen sometimes is DaVinci, the computer, your computer and DaVinci will just have an argument, and next thing you know, it all disappears, and everything you just worked on up until your last save point is gone. So anytime you make an edit, you should click Save. It literally takes two seconds. All right, so we've made our edits. I can turn this off which is, you know, over here, I just turned it off, got rid of the bars. And I'm going to drag the playhead back here, and we're going to watch our edit. And that's how I did it. It's that simple. So that's how I did the first edit. I'm going to show you guys one more thing. We're going to get rid of all this. I don't need it. We're going to click Delete. And I'm going to move the playhead back to the beginning. This is a clip of Alex. As soon as I hit Play, you're going to hear the music, so I'll be quiet. Or are you going to hear? Spin it. Now. Okay, problem here is I already changed this to 24 frames a second from 60, which I shouldn't have done because I didn't do it in the video that way. So we're going to move it back to where it was. Clever attributes. I'm going to go down to 54. Ah, I went too fast. This is what I filmed it at, 60 frames. Click OK. Now it's back to where it was, and now you'll hear it. Spin it. Now. I'm a hell of a director, ain't I? Okay, so no, since none of this had audio in it when I filmed it, it had uh, background music, we're going to come up here again, and we're going to just bring down the clip into the timeline. And I'm going to pick a spot. I'm going to show you how easy it is to, to speed ramp into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to pick a spot where I want it to start. Let's say right there. I'm going to highlight this and then I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go up here to retime curve and we got to do this again. Right click and we're going to come up here to retime controls. The first time was retime curve. Second time was retime controls. This bar here, nobody uses in any tutorial I've ever seen and I'm not going to use it. So we're going to come over here to retime frame and we're going to click that arrow. And we're going to turn off retime frame and turn on retime speed down here on the bottom. If you're not, if you're losing me. It's down here. After I got that clicked, I clicked this little gray area there. I've already chosen the spot where I want to start the speed ramp. So being as that this is in 60 frames a second, we're not going to, we're going to leave this bar alone. And the way you move this bar is to right click over the top of this 300% and you can move it up and down. And the reason why you want to move it down is if you're speed ramping from slow motion, you want this bar to be down as many as much percentage as you can so you can drag and you'll so you can drag it up for your speed ramp and I'm going to show you what I mean by that okay so we're just going to leave it right back there it doesn't really matter where it is so now I figured out where I want it to start my speed ramp I'm going to go over here to the little hundred right here in the middle of the clip and there's a little black diamond or triangle I'm going to click that and I'm going to click add speed point and then I'm going to play through where I want the speed ramp to end before he fist pumps. So that's a little too far. So we want to go right here. Maybe just before his just before his hand goes down. And I'm going to click the little black triangle again. I'm going to add another speed point. Now we're going to speed ramp everything in between these two white dots, which are speed points. So you're going to come down here and you're going to click on this line and you're going to drag it up. And I'm going to drag it up right now. It's at 100 percent speed where see right there where it says retime speed. I'm going to drag it up to about 500. We're going to drag it up to retime speed says right around 500. 
right there. Now, when I do this from slow motion, I'll drag that line up anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000. But that's why you got to have this line down like I showed you a second ago. Now we're going to see how this looks. I might have done it too much for being that it was filmed in 60 frames a second. Boom. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. So if you notice, it's really abrupt. Boom. So we can fix that. By fixing that, we can make it smoother. These little white dots, which are the speed points, you click on that and you want to add a Bezier curve. So you click on it. When it turns red, you come up here and you click this symbol. Come down and click this one. Click the symbol again. And you've added these curves, which smooths out the ramp. And then we go back to the beginning and boom, a lot smoother. You can make it even smoother than that if you like. I kind of like the way it is when I do just leave it that way. But you can drag these out, these little handles, and make it smoother each way. Once they bump it, it's only so far you can go. So then, yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, let's say right after the fist pump, I want to slow it down. Yeah, see, my computer started because it's speed ramping is very taxing on your computer, so you see it glitch a little. So I'm going to add a, another speed point. And we'll go to right about there. I'm going to add one more speed point. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this down to about, you, there's, you can't really go more than 40, 50% because, well, you can, but it'll start looking really goofy. So we'll go to about 50 and then we'll see what that looks like. Slows right down. Okay, so it was a little jittery. You can add your Bezier there. You can add your Bezier there. And then slow down. See, I might have slowed it down too much. So basically what you have now is full speed here, speed ramp, full speed, slow motion, full speed out. Full speed out. That's how you speed ramp into VNG Resolve. It's really not that hard. So, like I said, this isn't a master class about editing. I'm not the greatest editor, but I am going to show you what I learned as I'm making this journey into learning how to become a better editor and a better filmmaker. So, what I'm going to show you now is the finished product. This is actual footage that I shot that's in the video, and you'll see how I put it together in the video that's going to start now. Thank you for watching. Please enjoy the video. Please subscribe. Click the bell icon. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys next time. Let's go win somebody. Come join us.